This video is slightly different from a lot of the ones that I've done in the past, and it's because I'm talking about a very particular type of monster. Now, I don't usually talk about types of monsters, I usually talk about role play concepts or social constructs or just generally vague things at your table, but this is much more specific. I want to talk about dragons. If you're referring to the incident with the dragon, I was barely involved. I mean, it is called Dungeons and Dragons after all, right? And I know tons and tons and tons of people have talked about dragons. I mean, they've been talked to death. They've been the core quintessential part of a game. So what is it that I could possibly have to offer about dragons? Well, I've run a lot of them in my time and I've begun to realize that there's a lot of things that can be done to make them seem more imposing, more intimidating. We've all seen Matthew Mercer or Brennan Lee Mulligan run a dragon and the gravitas and the importance that they bring, the absolute terror the players feel and seeing the dragons on the field. But come on, we're not Matthew Mercer or Brennan Lee Mulligan, now are we? No, dragons can be really hard to nail down the gravitas. The players will respect a dragon simply because of the history of, well, dragons. But are they really going to feel that same way you're really hoping for? Well, I've run a few dragons, I've learned a few things, and I would like to share that very personal, practical information with you all, and hopefully it can help. So let's talk about it. Player Roll is a proud affiliate of Hero Forge, which is not something that I ever thought I'd be saying, but I'm very excited to. Hero Forge is an incredibly powerful conceptualization and creation tool for miniatures. Big ones, small ones, ones that are multicolored, Hero Forge is incredible at making exactly the kind of minis that you need. With customizable poses, hundreds of different props, and basically anything you need to make a specialized miniature, this is perfect for you. Please check out the link in the description to help out the channel, and back to the video. So one of the things that I really want to discuss about dragons, and this is going to be a little bit difficult, but it's voices. Now, I try to avoid voices because voices are very much not necessary for your table. They're just not. A voice is nothing more than window dressing. It's something to add some really fun flavor text to your campaign because when you talk in a different voice, if you're gonna talk in a Scottish accent, it does sort of bring a difference to the character and it really lets everybody else feel like they know that character and it brings that, well, little bit of space to it. But it's not necessary. And even if you're going to talk in a pompous British accent or talk a little bit more in a Cockney one, it's not necessary. It's just dressing. But for a dragon specifically, you want them to have gravitas. You want them to feel different and impressive. I'm not going to give tips on how to do a dragon voice here. If you guys want that from me, please let me know in the comments down below. But that's not what I'm discussing. No, what I'm discussing is how to communicate the dragon's voice. <gasps> I'm a dragon. Even if you're not going to do it, make sure you have their speech patterns nailed down. Make sure you understand how it is that they speak. Because you see, dragons are hugely influential creatures in the world, and there are probably only a few of them. They are hugely territorial, they control massive space, and they are impressive. So know how they speak. A gold dragon will probably talk eloquently, and they will clearly and precisely speak with everything that they do because they are regal and noble and expect people to give them that respect. Meanwhile, a red dragon will speak in a very similar way, but because they are far more angry and terrifying, they'll probably do so with a force and in recognition and demand that respect. You don't have to do voices for them, but have the way that they speak down, because even if you are a DM who speaks with, the red dragon approaches you and demands that you give them a sacrifice. Even if you don't give specifics on how they speak, make sure you know how they're going to so you can describe it properly. Additionally, these creatures are huge, massive. Their voices will echo, so make that clear. Say, as it approaches you and demands that you give it tribute, its voice echoes across the walls and the very ceiling shakes Rocks falling down from the very gravitas and baritone of its own voice. Make sure to emphasize the power of these creatures, not in their mechanics, but in their very presence. Because a dragon is a hugely world-altering individual. And that's another thing. I've noticed a lot of people accidentally skip over one of the most important parts of the dragons in the monster manual. Regional effects. Yes, the stat block for a dragon is terrifying, absolutely 100%, but a regional effect makes it clear how powerful this creature is without you ever even having to get near enough to it or speak to it. The regional effects on these things can be amazing. The very fact that a red dragon just existing causes the entire area around it to just begin to burn with a massive heat should say something. He doesn't even have to do anything but sleep and he changes the entire climate around him. That communicates. Pa <laughs> And 
that's the other thing you should take into account. What is the political climate around the dragon? Because if there is a kingdom nearby and a dragon, the kingdom's going to be affected. The entire kingdom. That dragon may be totally leading them into poverty because its very existence cuts off all trade routes because of its regional effects. They are forces in the world to be reckoned with, even if they're not doing anything. That is something to really nail down. Additionally, when you're actually having a party fight, please, 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 have its mechanics and its strategy down beforehand. The first dragon I ever ran was an ancient white dragon, and I made sure that its fighting style was feral. It didn't think it acted because that's how white dragons are supposed to. But when they finally got down that it was feral and they expected it to act that way, it suddenly got wise and started acting smart totally throwing them off key. They did not expect or know that was going to happen. You need to make sure that the dragon is smart ahead of time because you as a DM are not gonna be able to plan it out beforehand. I would even plan out their actions beforehand. This round they'll take a breath weapon, the next round they'll do this, the next round they'll do that. Have a plan, it's flexible, don't stick to it, but be ready for it because you want this dragon to appear as if it deserves the amazing power that it has. Does that make sense? You really want to make these things just feel terrifying to the players and by doing so you have to make them seem incredibly competent. And then here's the last bit. There's a new section of one of the newer books, Fizzband's Treasury of Dragons, that talks about the effect of a dead dragon. A dragon is a creature of massive powerful arcana. There is magic flowing through their very blood and when they die that power does not just dissipate. It explodes. It goes out. It decimates the area around them because they have just decimated the weave. And that is something really fun to keep in mind because that will nail down to the players even after they've defeated it how influentially terrifying this creature was, how powerful they were, and what it was that they were up against. And doing that, making the creature seem that powerful, can do an amazing job of having your players respect a dragon and have a very fun encounter with it. If you could do all that, you should be able to run some pretty cool encounters at your table. So go out into the world and make it your own, you beautiful bastards. Don't forget to have a great day, and of course, never forget to play your role. Thank you, come again. A huge shout out to all those divine bastards over on our Patreon that helped make this video happen. Big D the Cool Guy, BKBW, Diet Blue, Duplicolor, Sassy Cat Productions, Sorit, Supreme Court, Talia Martin, Tenai, Void Mystic, and Volpe Nico. We wouldn't be able to do what we do without our patrons, and we are very thankful for your continued support. You guys are the absolute best, and I will never take your support for granted.